Hi. Now we're going to take a look at solving exponential equations. Here's the generic form, a to the x equals b. Remember your base has to be greater than zero and it cannot equal one. What makes an equation exponential? Well, your variable is in the exponent position, hence exponential. So what do I need to know? First of all, how to rewrite bases and exponents and your logarithm properties. If you're still a little weak on the logarithm properties, be sure and watch the video again. Um, and there's a lot more detailed videos out there. Check your notes, check your teacher, because it will really help you with a lot of the exponential problems as well. Now, some exponential problems are easier than others. We've got here, three to the seventh equals three to the x. Well, I call this kind of the, the kindergarten way of looking at it. If your bases are the same, and both sides are equal, then your exponents must be the same. So if three to the seventh equals three to what power? Well, that power has to be also seven, because only three to the seventh equals three to the seventh. If the bases are the same, then the exponents must be the same. What if the bases aren't the same? Well, if you can rewrite them so they are, if possible, then do so. For example, here, we've got 8 to the x equals 2 to the 4th. I can rewrite that 8 as 2 cubed. So 2 cubed taken to the power of x, we can multiply the exponents there, and we can set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So 3x equals 4, which means x equals 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third. Now the problem comes when there is no common base then we have to use logarithms. Remember, logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. When we're solving logarithms, we're able to use the definition, the swirly-do that we talked about in the previous video. If you didn't watch the logarithm video, then the swirly-do means absolutely nothing to you. Um, but it's the definition of the logarithm, swirly-do. So feel free to look at it. But when we have a variable in the exponent position, there's one particular property of the logarithm that we're going to use a great deal. Recall that logarithms represent exponents, so here we have an exponent to an exponent. That's when we multiply. We are allowed to take this exponent of x and move it to the front based on the properties of logarithms. Yay! So notice here your x is an exponent. You have a variable exponent. Your goal is to get that x out of the exponent. Remember, we're supposed to whittle it down, get rid of our obstacles, so we can get x equals a number. Not something to the power of x equals a number, just x equals a number. So when we move it to the front, it's no longer an exponent. And we can deal with it like we've done before to get the x by itself. Multiply, divide, add, subtract, whatever we need to do. So recall this. We love this, star it, highlight it, whatever you need to do. And let's take a look at an example. We have three times four to the x equals 21. It's an exponential because your x is in the exponent position. So we want to get this factor here by itself by dividing both sides by the three. So we get x to the, uh, I'm sorry, four to the x equals seven. Logarithm is what undoes that exponent that variable exponent. So we're gonna take the common log of both sides, and that means we can now move, notice it's on both sides, so now we can move the x to the front, and now we have x times log of four. To undo multiplication, we divide. Now we're not going to divide just by the LOG, just that little segment. Remember, the LOG by itself is meaningless. It has to be attached to something to represent a number. So the log of four in its entirety is what we're gonna divide both sides by, and we get x equals log of seven divided by log of four. We're gonna go back and write down the steps. First of all, we get the base and the variable exponent alone. That's when we divided both sides by three. We take the log of both sides here, or natural log, depending on what your base is. Usually it's the common log, unless we see an e. Now remember, this allows you to move the exponent to the front. Now we've gotten rid of the obstacle of the x being an exponential, being in the exponent position. And we can solve like we normally do just to get x by itself, 
it's x times log of 4, so we divide to get rid of that log of 4 here. Good. Now, there is a difference between what we call exact answers or approximate answers. Your teacher may want both. They may want just the exact. Some teachers just want the approximate. So this is what we would call an exact answer. It's exact because we didn't use a calculator. We didn't have to round any decimals. We leave it in logarithm form. If you put this in your calculator, log of 4 divided by log of 7, you're going to get a long string of decimals that you'll have to round or truncate. Whenever you round, uh, in other words, we can't write all of them, you're going to want to use the little squigglies instead of the straight equals. This means approximate. And the approximate answer, generally, you have to use your calculator and your result's going to be in decimals. So that's the difference between those two, just whether or not you use your calculator. So, for example, e to the x plus 3 equals 20. We get the e to the x by itself, because remember, it's the variable that we're looking for. We have to get that variable out of the exponent position. What does that? Logarithms. How this one's different, though, look at our base. Our base is e. Remember, we usually use the common log or the natural log. If we see nothing but numbers, common log. If we see an e, natural log. That way, we have the same base. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides, and there's two ways of looking at this. First of all, what we did before, we're able to move the x to the front, and then we can divide by natural log of e. But remember, the natural log of e is the number 1, which is handy. That's why we took the natural log instead of the common log. So we can simplify, because the base of the natural log is an understood e. So that gives us the natural log of 17, which the approximate answer is 2.8332. Yay! Now, another way of looking at it is when you look at the base E here, if the base of your log is the same as the base of what you're taking the log of, then that side just equals your exponent. So x equals natural log of 17. Now, honestly, most people forget this little shortcut. But let me show you where the shortcut comes from. Your base e to the power of the natural log of 17 equals e to the x. Yeah, it's the definition of the logarithm, the swirly do. So if we rewrite that e to the natural log of 17 equals e to the x, your bases are the same. Therefore, your exponents must be the same. Therefore, x equals natural log of 17 which the approximate answer is 2.83. Yay! So it's the same of what we got before. There's not one method more impressive than the other. They both say basically the same thing. You definitely get the same result. So now I want you to try. Here are three different examples. Pause the video when you're ready. If you feel like you need to watch it again before you try them, that's fine. But when you get back to this point, Pause the video, try all three of them, and it's okay if you're wrong. We're going to go over them and kind of see where you made your errors. Hopefully you won't be, but if so, it's not a big deal. You're going to correct it, and you're going to see where your errors are, and that way you can master it next time. Okay? So go ahead and pause it and hit play when you're ready to watch. Pause it. Hi! So now we're going to take a look at the exponential problems. We can tell it's exponential because our uh, variable is there in the exponent position. So, again, remember, we got to whittle it down to x equals a number, so we need to get this exponent out of the exponent position. So let's first of all get this factor here by itself, the e to the x by itself, by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of the 1 half. In other words, multiply both sides by 2. Kind of squeeze that in there. So that way, the 2's reduce, they divide out to 1. And we get e to the x equals 10. Now, because we have a base e, we're not going to take the common log of both sides. Some people say, well, we've got a 10 over here. Why don't we take the common log? You could. I'm not saying that you would get the wrong answer, but it's kind of the long way around. Because we're worried about this variable that's in the exponent position. So we want to undo this. And here, the base is e. So that's why we're choosing the natural log. So let's take the natural log of the left, which is e to the x, and 
then the natural log of the right, Oop, which is your 10. Now remember, because the understood base of the natural log is E, if your bases are alike, it equals just whatever your exponent is. But you could still also move the x to the front if you want, because the natural log of E is 1. So either way that you look at it, it's still going to be correct. So this reduces to just the exponent, because the base of the natural log and the base of this is the same, equals natural log of 10. Now, this is your exact answer. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get approximately 2.303. So this is your approximate answer. And you can ask your instructor which one they want, or they may ask for both. So just be prepared. Let's take a look at the next one. We have 2 to the 3x equals 9. We can't get our bases alike, so we're going to take the common log of both sides. So the log of 2 to the 3x equals the log of 9. Okay. Again, this allows us to move that to the front. Our goal is to undo our obstacle. Our obstacle is the fact that the variable we're trying to solve for is in the exponent position. So to undo that, we take the log of both sides and we get 3x log of 2 equals log of 9. Now we want the x by itself. Everything here is being multiplied. 3 times x times log of 2. So we're going to use division to get the x by itself. We're going to go ahead and divide by the 3 and the log of 2 at the same time on both sides, 3 log of 2. So on the left, so those 3's are gone, the logs of 2 are gone, and we get just x equals log of 9 divided by 3 log of 2. This is your exact answer. Okay, I'll write it underneath this time. This is your exact. If you're to put that in your calculator, we would get approximately 1.057. Okay, there's your approximate answer. Now, one thing I want to stress about your calculator, depending on whether you're using a scientific calculator or, um, uh, I just went blind, a uh, graphing calculator. <laughs> A scientific calculator or graphing calculator will depend kind of how you're putting these in. But even with the graphing calculator, where you put everything in at once, you have to be very careful with your parentheses. If you just put in log of 9 divided by 3 log of 2, you're going to get the wrong answer. The reason is your calculator is using order of operations. So they're going to take the log of 9, they're going to divide it by 3 but they're only going to divide by 3. And then they're going to take that result and multiply it by log of 2. So you have to put in a parentheses here and here to tell your calculator that you are dividing by this entire thing, not just the 3. Okay? So you have to be very careful with that. Whenever you have more than one factor or piece down here in the denominator, be sure you put everything in parentheses when you put it in your calculator. All right, now in C, same thing. We want to get the x out of the exponent position. We can use a logarithm, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you notice, I've got this, which I can write as a base 3, the 1 third, and the 27 that I can write as a base 3. So back to kind of the beginning problem before we did logarithms, I can write that 3, or the 1 third, sorry, as 3 to the negative 1 to the x, and that 27 as 3 cubed. So we have 3 to the opposite of x equals 3 cubed, and if your bases are alike and they're set equal, then your exponents must be alike. Therefore, negative x, or opposite of x, equals 3, so x equals a negative 3. So how did you do? Good. Well, let's take a look few things to remember. First of all, exponential equations have the variable as the exponent. If we can, we want to rewrite each side with the same base, if possible. 
Otherwise, we're going to use logarithms to undo that exponential. They're inverses. Well, hopefully that helped. If you still have questions, feel free to watch the video again. Look for other videos online. Ask your teacher, ask your tutor, ask your friends. But be sure and ask. Don't let your pride keep you from passing. Believe me, there's always, always tons of questions on the logarithm section because there's a lot of different pieces to it. So don't let your pride keep you from passing. You're not alone in this. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.